Are the power blackouts also getting to the Prime Minister? A Free National Movement MP accuses the leader of the ultimate betrayal, and it has been the worst week in history for the opposition party. We'll tell you why. We've got those stories and others. I'm your host, Krishna Virgil, and this is the Tribune's Top 5. Following continuous power cuts, Prime Minister Perry Christie suggested that they brought the country embarrassment and suggested that he ordered a probe into the root cause of the outages. Prime Minister Perry Christie on Monday bemoaned Bahamas Power and Light's inability to provide uninterrupted electricity supply to the island, telling the Tribune he was not only distressed by the outages, but that he ordered a probe to uncover the root cause of the most recent island-wide power cut. Mr. Christie suggested that the latest mass distribution had brought the government embarrassment as it took place the day before the opening ceremony of an international civil aviation conference, which began on Monday at the Kendall Isaac National Gymnasium. While the Prime Minister said he was unofficially advised that the incident was the result of human error, he insisted that it was too catastrophic and unusual to let it pass without the highest investigation. Mr. Christie's position regarding BPL service inconsistency is in stark contrast to that of his deputy Prime Minister Philip Brave Davis, who is also Minister of Works. In a recent interview, Mr. Davis backed the electricity provider. In a recent interview, Mr. Davis backed the electricity provider, saying he has no regrets over handing over the day-to-day -day operations of the former Bahamas Electricity Corporation to American company Power Secure. He told this newspaper he thinks BPL is meeting its mandate and blamed the consistent power outages on aged machines. Mr. Christie, when he was asked by the Tribune to give the Hemans a word of comfort over the constant outages, which have angered many, said, quote, I am as distressed about this as every Bahamian, end quote. He spoke on the sidelines of the opening ceremony of the 9th International Civil Aviation Organization Air Services Agreement. Several hundred representatives from around the world were attending the five-day event at the gymnasium. More than 60 employees, including management and line staff, were fired from the one and only Ocean Club for performance-based reasons. But the hotels reported dissatisfaction over unsavory guest reviews about its staff, serving as the primary reason for conducting pre-Christmas layoffs. The Paradise Island-based luxury resort hotel, in an official statement on Tuesday, said it is in the process of reorganizing our structure and redefining job descriptions across the board. This, it said, has resulted in a necessary turnover of about 60 positions at the hotel and will ensure a streamlining of the guest experience. On Tuesday, terminations involved around 15% of the near 400 employees who worked at the hotel. Umbrella Union, the National Congress of Trade Unions Bahamas on Thursday, swore to level the playing field between employers and workers in the country, citing the one and only Ocean Club terminations as incentive enough to make life miserable for foreign employers who try to set up shop in the country without union intervention. The NCTUB executive officials during a press conference demanded that the government cease and desist from brokering deals with foreign investors without identifying that a union will be involved as part of the process. It has been a horrible week in politics for the free national movement, what seemed to be just another conflict at the constituency level involving Central and South Africa MP Edison Key signaled a tumultuous plot which rattled the party to its core. The Central and South Africa Free National Movement Constituency Association on Monday attributed Area MP Edison Key's criticism of FNM leader Dr. Hubert Menace to disappointment that he will not be the party's candidate for the 2017 general election. Early last year, Mr. Key confirmed to the Tribune that he would not be seeking a nomination for the party for this seat. According to Chairman of the Association, Victor Patterson, it was Mr. Key who specifically told them to seek another standard bearer because he would be stepping down. Meanwhile, Progressive Liberal Party Chairman Bradley Roberts used the situation to question Dr. Minister's loyalty not only to his party, but to Bahamians. He defended Mr. Key, suggesting that his loyalty to the FNM leader was allegedly rewarded with backstabbing, disrespecting, and undermining. Responding to the matter on Monday as a guest on 96.9 FM radio show The Revolution with host Juan McCartney, after the 78-year-old Central and South Abaco MP lambasted Dr. Minnis in a report in the National Guardian, Mr. Patterson sought to clarify the association's part in Mr. Key's candidacy. It came after the MP told the local daily he will not run on the FNM's ticket and claimed that the Kalani MP was not a man of his word. Mr. Key further claimed that Dr. Minnis conspired with certain FNM supporters to end his political career. A part of this plan involves not informing him about secret meetings that took place in his constituency, the Daily reported. 
Mr. Key also claimed that there were a few white dissidents, led by the association chairman, who were involved in this conspiracy. However, Mr. Patterson said during the radio interview that the association was led by a diverse group of black and white people. He said there was support for the new candidate, 24-year-old James Albury, because although young, he impressed everyone during the interview portion of the vetting process. He has not been officially announced by the party as its pick for the area. However, party chairman Sidney Hawley told the Tribune on Friday that the organization planned to ratify several Family Island candidates in the coming weeks. In a bold move that stunned Parliament, seven opposition MPs submitted a letter of no confidence in Free National Movement leader Dr. Hubert Minnis to both House Speaker Dr. Kendall Manger and Governor General Dame Marguerite Pindling on Wednesday, revealing that a vote was taken among them for Long Island MP Loretta Butler-Turner to be the new official opposition leader in the House of Assembly. Although the unexpected petition to revoke Dr. Minnis' appointment was accepted by Dr. Major, the Governor General still has to officially approve their request. The historic moment unfolded during the session that was expected to begin the debate on a series of financial bills. After delivering several announcements and without indication, Dr. Major informed parliamentarians that he received a formal letter from the seven MPs. As he read the request to oust Dr. Minnis, the letter's contents triggered taunts and gasps from seated government members of parliament. And while he listened to the formal rejection of his leadership, Dr. Minnis did not make eye contact with any of his colleagues seated on his side of the floor. Instead, he showed no reaction, only from time to time staring at his notepad or raising his bowed head to glance at those seated on the government side. The move sparked shock from constituents in Long Island and led one of the party's founding fathers to point out that this could have all been avoided. Maurice Moore told the Tribune that Dr. Minnis should have fired the MPs ahead of the party's July convention. Dr. Minnis has in turn invited the MPs to tender resignations from the party. It looks like Free National Movement leader Dr. Hubert Minnis will have to do more than just ask for the resignations of the Rebel 7. They've all told the Tribune that they won't quit the party. In the aftermath of Free National Movement leader Dr. Hubert Minnis' call for the Rebel 7 members of Parliament to resign from the party or face disciplinary action, several of the signatories on the letter to revoke his appointment as official opposition leader in Parliament have said they are declining to quit. One of them insisting that he won't be forced out of the organization and another accusing the leader of having a lust for power. Port Charlotte MP Dr. Andre Rollins told the Tribune that for Dr. Minnis to demand the resignations of 70% of his parliamentary caucus is selfish. He said on Friday it was important for Dr. Minnis to look at the welfare of the party, which is far more important than a lust for power. For his part, Central and South Africa MP Edison Key said Dr. Minnis could not force him to leave the FNM. Mr. Key maintained that instead of Dr. Minnis calling for their resignations, he should be the one to bow out of the top post of the party because his parliamentary caucus no longer reposes confidence in his ability to lead them. Mr. Key, 78, said he expects to be expelled. However, he said this does not mean anything to him. Meanwhile, Central Grand Bahama MP Nico Grant said he respectfully rejected the leader's request to leave the party. Montague MP Richard Lightbourne, North Eleuther MP Theo Neely, and Sedan's MP Hubert Chipman, speaking to ZNS News on Thursday, also said they had no plans to resign from the party. Want to get in on the discussion? Well, here's a you can. Just log on to our website at www.tribune242.com. Like us on Facebook, the Tribune News Network. Send us a tweet at Tribune242. Or subscribe to our YouTube page, Tribune242.